I think we can all agree that the greatest problem the world faces in the 21st century is the problem of Islamophobia. At least that's what I keep hearing from Muslim organizations. The irrational fear of Islam has been sweeping the globe for nearly 1400 years, ever since the beloved Prophet of Islam, Allah's prayers be upon him, began peacefully slaughtering unbelievers in the name of love. You'd think that in our time, we would have finally learned to be tolerant of Muhammad's calls for the violent subjugation of all humanity. But no, racists and bigots continue their hate-filled opposition to the Prophet's rulings. Take racist Joe Biden, for instance. When racist Joe Biden heard that the peaceful and benevolent nation of Brunei was about to begin stoning men and women to death for homosexuality and adultery, did he respond with tolerance and respect? Not at all. Racist Joe Biden responded with what can only be described as hate speech. He tweeted, Stoning people to death for homosexuality or adultery is appalling and immoral. Every single person on earth is entitled to be treated with dignity and to live without fear. There is no excuse, not culture, not tradition, for this kind of hate and inhumanity. President Obama would spin in his bicycle helmet if he saw this tweet. Racist Joe Biden calls Brunei's implementation of Islamic law appalling, immoral, hateful, and inhumane. This sort of criticism of Islam is precisely what led a white supremacist to open fire at two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. At least, I keep hearing from Muslim organizations that criticism of Islam is what led to the white supremacists' attack on immigrants. Did the Sultan of Brunei invent Sharia? No. Sharia is based on the commands and practices of Muhammad, Allah's prayers be upon him. Sunan ibn Majah, 2555. It was narrated from Imran bin Hussein that a woman came to the Prophet and confessed to committing fornication. This woman was married, so it was adultery. He issued orders, and her garments were tightened around her so that her private parts would not become uncovered. Then he stoned her, and he offered the funeral prayer for her. Sunan Ibn Majah, 2561. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever you find doing the action of the people of Lut, kill the one who does it and the one to whom it is done. Lut is Lot. The action of the people of Lot refers to homosexual sex between two men. Muhammad tells his followers to kill the one who does it and the one to whom it is done. So both partners in the homosexual relationship. Is a Muslim ruler free to dismiss the decisions of Muhammad, Allah's prayers be upon him? Absolutely not. As we read in the Holy Quran, Surah 4, verse 65, But know by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them, and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions, and accept them with full submission. Allah Almighty declares in the Holy Quran that a Muslim can have no real faith until he makes Muhammad judge in all disputes, finds in himself no resistance against Muhammad's decisions, and accepts them with full submission. What did Muhammad, Allah's prayers be upon him, say was the punishment for homosexuality and adultery? Death. Is the Sultan of Brunei, as a Muslim ruler, supposed to ignore the decisions of his prophet or submit to them? Islam, which means submission, requires him to submit to the decisions of Muhammad, Allah's prayers be upon him. And how does racist Joe Biden react? Does he praise the Sultan of Brunei for doing exactly what Muhammad, Allah's prayers be upon him, ordered him to do? No. He sends a tweet to more than 3 million followers, calling Muhammad, Allah's prayers be upon him, appalling, immoral, hateful, and inhumane. Joe Biden? More like Joe Bigot. Friends, we have a decision to make. Either we have to continue claiming that any criticism of Muhammad, Allah's prayers be upon him, and his teachings is the product of racism, bigotry, and Islamophobia, 
In which case, racist Joe Bigot is a racist, a bigot, and an Islamophobe for calling Sharia penalties appalling, immoral, hateful, and inhumane. Or we can all agree that it's perfectly acceptable to criticize and condemn the life and message of Muhammad, Allah's prayers be upon him. But what kind of world would we live in if we treated Islam like other ideologies and didn't give it the privileged status it demands? You have 24 hours to decide.